Welcome to Grace Family International Church. The following you're about to listen to is a message from Rev. Yinka Ojo, our senior pastor. So sharpen your pencil, grab your notebook and Bible because you're about to be empowered. Listen and be blessed. Oh, ma la sempre della lezzogola E morancia nella lava E morele bosso mora la 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 Lift up your voice and just worship him with the spirit Mengele bosso mora la maiera Nella soma iera la maiera E malera bosso nare bosso nere bosso nera la iera Lift up your hands. We place you on the highest place. For you are the great high priest. We bless you. Exalt Jesus. Above all else. Above everyone and everything else. As we come to you. And worship at your feet. Oh, all together, lift up your hands and tell the Lord I bless you. I bless you. On the highest place. With your hands lifted up and your voice lifted to the sky, we bless you. We bless you on the highest place for you. For you, and a great I pray. Oh, we bless you. Shepherd of my soul, I I give you full control, wherever you may be, I will follow, I have made a choice, to listen for your voice, wherever you may be. I will go. Everybody sing it again. Shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul. Everybody sing. I give you full control. Wherever you may lead, I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your voice. Wherever you may live, I will go. Be it in the quiet pasture. Be it in a quiet pasture. Or by a gentle stream. The shepherd of my 
soul is by my side. And should I face the mighty mountains of my God and the shepherd of my soul will be my God. From the beginning again, shepherd of my soul, shepherd of my soul. I give you full control Wherever you may I will fall And I have made a choice To listen for your voice To listen for your voice Wherever Wherever you may lead I will go in a quiet pasture, be it in a quiet pasture, or by a gentle stream, the shepherd of my soul is by my side. Should I face a mighty mountain, Shepherd of my soul, the shepherd of my soul will be my God. One more time. Should I face a mighty mountain? Should I face a mighty mountain? A valley dark and dim. A valley dark and dim. The shepherd of my soul will be my God. Lift up your hand and just thank the Lord for the promise of divine direction you will not be left as a as an orphan you will not be left confused he has promised he said I will send the Holy Ghost he will come within you he will lead you into all truth he will show you things to come that's why the Holy Ghost is in our lives thank God for the shepherd amen Thank you, Father, again for your word concerning divine direction, how to hear from heaven, how to be led by your spirit. Thank you for this wonderful benefit and blessing that belongs to us as children of the living God. Remind us again of what you have spoken in your word. Teach us afresh and anew. Grant us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your word tonight flood the eyes of our spirits the eyes of our inner man cause these eyes to be flooded with light from above cause us to understand what we're hearing tonight let our heart be like fertile soil that the seed of the word of god will be planted into tonight and tonight we receive 30 fold 60 fold yeah even a hundred fold benefit blessing result from the word we're going to hear tonight i bind every demonic bird every satanic spirit that seeks to pick the seed of the word of god i render this place a a place that you cannot function in i release understanding the entrance of the word give it light the word of god will enter and penetrate and we shall be doers of the word thank you our father for we pray in jesus name Somebody say amen. Give the Lord a clap of rejoicing. Oh, hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. Praise God. Before I go into the word tonight, I have a very good friend of ours, a friend of the family, a friend of the ministry. Amen. And a dear brother, indeed. He's my brother in the spirit. And in the body, <laughs> that one in the body, a brother from another mother, but in the spirit, amen. And this brother, Shola Oluwenga, please let's just welcome him and just thank God for his life. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, amen. Some of the unit, some of the testimonies I share in church, you know, he's involved. If you read my book, now to get saved, how to get spirit filled. I didn't put his name there. It's like an anonymous person. But these stories are real. Amen. And uh, he, when I say one or two things, he, he will even corroborate with him. He will tell you it's real. Amen. Praise God. But the Lord is good. Amen. Well, Pastor Della is in Ireland. Grace Family Church, Republic of Ireland. 
they are having their annual convention this week. So she has started ministering tonight. She's going to be ministering in various parts of Ireland. And then the weekend itself, um, our church is having the con- convention and all that. So let's remember how in prayers and, and um, the work going on there. Let's remember Pastor Francis, Allah, Pastor Vic. Victoria Ola and the number of things that God is doing. You have your Bible. Can I see your Bible though? Uh, okay, I want to share some things tonight that um, I feel all of these previous weeks that the Lord has been speaking to us about understanding divine direction um, as it's good now that you know certain things. Let me say this. I may forget these teachings are available in CD format. You need to get all of these teachings. These are teachings that will look. Nobody can fool you or hoodwink you anymore when you know these things and you know where the scriptures are and you've mastered them. So you can get them your CD. Uh, you can also get bring your flash disc and they're going to put it on flash disc for you. Uh, different prizes, it's a lower price, and um, and various other formats, I think. But please make sure you have these teachings. They are so crucial. These are the last days, and there are spirits of deception out in the world, and there are false prophets and false teachers out there. And the people I pity the most are those that will not take time to learn the Bible for themselves. You see. There is darkness covering the face of the earth. But if you stay in the light of the word, you don't need to worry. What will happen in your own life will be that the glory will keep on increasing upon you. And upon you. Amen. And upon you. It's just like you are immune. You are untouchable. Why? Because you are walking in line with the plan and the purpose and the will of God. Can somebody say amen? So divine direction all throughout this month. And we've learned that the primary way God will lead the believer is how? By the word of God. Remember that. The primary way God will lead the believer is by the word. He has already led us in so many general areas. Already. And I gave an instance. I said if you are single and you want to know. And listen. I think the number one reason why marriages are scattering. Especially Christian marriages are scattering. Is because the Lord, they didn't ask God for his opinion. In the matter. Amen. No matter what kind of marriage you have, there will be challenges. There will be... You build your house on the rock. You build your house on the sand. Wind will come. Wave will come. Rain will come. All challenges will come. But one house will stand. The house that's built on the word. What God has said. And another house will fall. The one that's not built on what God has said. So that is a very important thing to understand if they, they, they you got to have an assurance in 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 from the word and then from your spirit if you're born again for instance before you start praying and say you know i'm in love with sister somebody i'm in love with brother somebody number one the first lead, before you go and ask god is this she the person is it the person does the person qualify with the initial leading god has given number one you must not be an equally unbeliever. That is already God's leading. So God cannot be leading you to marry somebody that is not saved at all. No matter how nice, good looking, whatever, nice perfume, nice Peruvian air, Ghanaian weave, everything nice. Amen. Praise God. I mean, her nose is pointed, her lips are thin. He is six foot five and his crisp English can make the queen jealous. <clears throat> is he saved? <laughs> uh, Pastor, I will do CNM. What's CNM? Convert and marry. I'll convert him and marry. Or marry and convert. <laughs> So, no, you're not allowed. You've already missed God's leading. You must be saved. If you are saved, you must be saved. If you're a child of God, it must be another child of God. Can I have a good amen? God has already led us in that. Number two, is he, is he, um, what's the other thing I mentioned the other day? 
is he, 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 is he or she, is this person you are interested in of the opposite gender? <laughs> we are living in perilous times that the Bible talked about. Praise God. We have to talk about these things. God will never change his mind about that fact. If you are a guy, he will never speak and say, well, some men love women. Some men love men. Some women love men. And some women love women. Be liberal and be, this is for goodness sake. It is 2014. Uh. Amen. Male and female. Made it them. Praise God. And he will never change his mind. No matter how developed and sophisticated we get. So, it's got to be saved. It's got to be of a different jet. And you see, you know, in fact, I had a pastor preaching somewhere in the Western world. And he was saying that now he has to tell when they are doing marriage counseling, you know, when you are counseling people, now he has to ask them, a brother who wants to marry sister, what were you originally? said on towards the end of the world has come so especially if you if you walk around in this western world western the fact that you see a lady looking like a lady does not mean that she was originally a lady <laughs> i'm if you know i'm not lying you know things are gonna happen eh? uh. so that then, now during premarital counseling they have to ask let us see your marriage certificate uh, your your birth certificate and let us see what they wrote there when you were born because people are doing all this surgery now god have mercy all right then uh, what else amen and then it will never lead you to somebody who is already married i told you of the person that said all this issue of sisters that don't have husbands in the church that is the weakness of christianity one man one wife and you know that that the women are more than the men if you're a lady and you're single don't buy into all that rubbish because you don't need to marry all the men god just needs to get you your own amen because you are working in the will of god you will always get your own have your mind Pastor, what if I get my own? Then the pool gets reduced. Leave the sinners to be fighting for the remaining. Scarcity. Be abundant. Think, always understand that God is a God of abundance. He will always have what, don't put yourself under stress or tension. Can somebody say amen? And then when you're under stress and tension, that's when you go and compromise. No. No. Amen. So, those things, you don't need to pray about them. They are already, God has already led us in that. Then when you have that in, then you now say, Lord, this person, this my friend kind of qualifies. Da, 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 da. So it's this person. Then God can begin to talk to you. When you've already embraced the initial leadership of the word of God. Can you say amen? Next, after the word of God, what's the second way God leads us? What, what's the second major way God leads us? But our spirit inside us in and i want to deal with that a little bit more but but 95 percent of the time in your lifetime that is how god will keep on talking to you and he doesn't really need to talk to you in any other spectacular way but we also see in the bible that god can also lead in spectacular ways and these are what we call spectacular ways of leading that is number one the voice of the holy spirit sometimes audible he can't do that he doesn't have to but he can't do that okay then visions and revelations paul talked about that in second i'm just doing a review a little bit of review here second corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 paul said i will go into visions and revelations a vision is a divinely granted appearance a revelation is a disclosure of special knowledge or information it's an unveiling and we saw that there are three types of visions and there are three types of revelations. I don't want to go into all those details. I did a lot of teaching on that last Wednesday. And of course, God can also speak to you through dreams, spiritual dreams. And I balanced it out last Wednesday. John 
excuse me, Joseph was led, God sent angel, an angel to him about twice or so concerning Jesus Christ in a dream. So it's scriptural, it's biblical. Paul had a dream and he saw somebody in a dream at night and he saw somebody saying, come to me. All right, so, so we, it, that can happen. Amen. And, um, but, um, God can also send prophetic words to us. I, I will, I'll not deal too much with that today. Um, maybe as God leads, maybe on Sunday. Prophets and prophecies and call. We've already had a bit about that, but I think we need to hear more about it because this is the New Testament. So many Christians are, they are, they are living their lives as if they are Moses in the wilderness. Praise God. This is the New Testament for goodness sake. And the order of prophets and prophetic instruction in the New Testament is different from the way it was in the Old Testament. Amen. I need, I need a cup, glass cup, and a bottle of water. I want to show you some. So, so that you understand that God, you see, God, what God has really done in creating the, the New Testament and what he has given us is so much that when we are not living by it, it grieves the Holy Spirit. You shouldn't be going to any prophet or anybody for, to consult concerning your life and your future. The Holy Spirit has been given to you and he will show you the future. That's what God has said. Jesus said that. Now, when you go out of what Jesus has said, you expose yourself to the realm of the demonic because you are in disobedience. Can somebody say amen? And many, many people do that because many of us are insecure about our salvation. Many of us are not sure of the finished work of Calvary concerning our lives. And that's, that's why you must be grounded in the scriptures. Um, some so-called Christian, somebody can just come and give them one fake prophecy and that's the end of their Christianity. Or that's the end of, somebody was telling me how, how one prophet keeps on prophesying and always prophesying money out of their pockets. Hey, there's somebody here, your number, your phone number is, oh, seven, 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 hey, that's my number. All right, come out here. Okay. Um, and all those prophecies always end up with money. That's how I know it's of the devil. Freely you have received, freely give. That's how the gifts of God are. Can I have an amen? And then some churches are set up in such a way that the prophet or whatever it is, people go to a consultation and they pray for them. And then some people even pay. They will have to pay to get appointments with the secretary, to the pastor. And then things are happening. That is not of God. It's of the devil. Can somebody say Amen. First of all, when you are ignorant of who you are and what God has given you, then anybody can make merchandise of you and make means made of you. But when you are, when you are um, grounded in the scriptures, you are fine. Can somebody say amen? So, I, I, we'll, we'll do that much later on. I want to cover a few things later on about prophets, prophecies, how unsolicited um, confirmations can come. God can use that um, and all of that. And then angels and all of that probably will cover that. But in the Old Testament, open it please. Everybody, can you see me? Can you see me? If you can't see me, can you see, can you see your hand up? In the Old Testament, just Paul. In the Old Testament, out of about roughly 3.6 million people came out of Egypt through the wilderness and ended in the promised land. Out of them, the spirit didn't have any influence or anything to do with all of them. Only the priests. And you cannot just be priest. You have to be born into the tribe of Levi. To be a priest, the prophets and they were just few. God put His hand on our prophet, and then the king. Those were the three categories of people out of the millions. And when, even when the spirit of God had something to do with them, this is what happened: pour water, pour, keep on pouring. 
This is how the Spirit came on them. Stop. But in the New Testament, all of us, God has turned the cup. Paul. This is how the Spirit is stopped. So even after it starts poured, when you move around. So, in the New Testament, you are a container. In the Old Testament, if you had anything to do with the Spirit at all, at all, you are not even a container. It just comes and pours off. When God wants to use it, and pours off. But in the New Testament, so, so which one is better? So, why do we take it? Why? Thank you. Why? So, why do we trivialize what God has done in the New Testament? And make it look as if it is inferior to what they had in the Old Testament. And then with the, with the better covenant, based on better promise that we have, we are trying to go and behave like people in the Old Testament. Why? If the people in the Old Testament were able to come around and see the way some of us Christians behave, trying to behave like them, they I hope they don't give you a righteous slap. Say so the thing we yearn for and we couldn't get in our lifetime. You have it. And you are trying to copy us. Amen. Praise God. Are you still here? All right. So today, so I feel that, that, that we're going to deal with that much later. I feel that's important to deal with. But today, I want to share on how to find God's will. How, how to find God. Just for a few minutes, let's go over a few things. I've always, since the early days of my Christianity, I've always been convinced that if I know what God has to say about the matter, if I have an instruction from heaven, if I know what God wants me to do, and I do it, I can't fail. Because God cannot fail. So the onus is on me to find out what is God saying, and what is his will, and what is his plan, and what is his direction, and if I can get that and obey that, oh, my life is made. Because with God's will comes the power to cause that will to cause you to, ex, ex, to, cause you to succeed. That's when God comes to the word into your life or direction. It also comes to get that p- package into it. The power to make you succeed and excel. And for that thing to come to pass and to be confirmed in your life. Somebody say amen. So that's why this is very important. I believe God is raising up an army. He's not just raising up people who are followers. Follow, 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 follow. No, he is also raising up um, an army of disciples. That's why we say that part of our vision is to raise strong believers. People that can hear God also for themselves. Don't be waiting for me to be hearing God for you all the time. All the time. You know, God speaks to me um, from time to time about people and all of that, but I don't look for it. And to tell you the truth, sometimes I don't like it. Too much information. Too much disclosure. Something God tells me, it has to take me two or three days to really get my mind proper because I just say, eh? Yeah. I would rather not know. But because of calling, yeah, and I get to know certain things. Then sometimes I know some things, and then God says, don't say. <sighs> That's even more serious. Praise God. So, personally, I would like you to, to know how to hear God for yourself. And me too, I hear God for myself. Everybody bear his own body. But, amen, it is well. You know, when you go to a church where the pastor, whoever the holy, the prophet is, relishes in telling you, I know everything about all of you, run away. And I'll tell you, I love to know why you make that, run away. Praise God. Because the word of God says, what man knows the things of a man, save the holy, Agba. Is that what it says? Save the spirit of that man who is in him. 
So that's the general order of God. From time to time, of course, God will give ministers um, certain things, certain instructions, certain directions, certain things to confirm and all of that. God will do that. But the primary way God wants your life to move ahead is that he wants to talk to you directly. Amen. He wants to talk to you directly. He wants to talk to you directly. Can you say amen? He wants to have a direct relationship with you. Can you say amen? Of course, there are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers who are like coaches to just tip you uh, and tell you the things and train you. But he wants you to do the thing yourself. Do the playing yourself. Do the action yourself. Enjoy God by yourself. All right. Are we here? Right. Now, when it comes to finding out what God wants you to do, there are two things I want to say now. Don't miss these two things. In regular routine day to day issues just pray a prayer of commitment and God will lead you many a times unconsciously Amen. All right. Where is Mr. Luringer? Come. But when it comes to major big decisions, come this way. Major big decisions and steps, it's a different matter. He was telling me, now don't take more than three minutes. He was talking, can I have another microphone? He was talking about, was sharing a little testimony. We're having a, a meeting in the office, and he shared a little testimony of what um, something he learned and something that happened to him that has to do with this series of teachings. And all right, and I want to bring up something from that a few days ago. Yeah, tell us. Um, the series has been on divine direction, and then sometimes, I think like two, sometimes last week. Um, I was sent on an errand by Pastor Deola, myself and Sister Taiwo. So we actually, Pastor asked me who knew the place I was going to. And I told her, Sister Taiwo. But Sister Taiwo was not there when you answered that. She was not there. So they told both of us to go. Only for us to get to a point. And I asked her to lead me. And she said she didn't even know where we were going. <laughs> So she had no place in mind. And right there, I just told myself, ah, I shouldn't have told Pastor because I felt you've been going to the place. That was why I told Pastor to tell you to follow me. But something just came up with me. At least we've been hearing of that, uh, divine direction. So I just prayed right there <laughs> that the Lord should lead us. It was in the, market, in, the, in the marketplace. So we just kept going. And lo and behold, that thing we're going to buy I saw someone holding it and I asked him, please, where can we get this? And the answer he gave me was that that is what he's into. He sells that and he took us to the shop. We bought all we needed to buy. He also introduced us to someone who helped us to do other things that we needed to do on that day. That's the testimony. Now, thank you very much. Come, go back to your seat. Now, that was very important because they were supposed to go to Adeniji to get or buy, get something. And he did not know, just as in, okay, yeah, she, she goes to the island. You know, and, goes, and then when they go there, they said, okay, lead us to the place. Said, ah, no, this particular one, I don't know where. So just said, ah, you know, divine direction. And then there comes somebody. In, um, no, if you know some of these markets, you know that that's not normal. Carrying what they are looking for and coming towards them on the street. And they said, ah, where do we get it? He said, that's what I sell. I'm actually on my way to the bank or something. But let's go back. One day, I was coming from, I was coming from the US and I had, my flight came to, landed in London in the morning and my flight to Lagos was that same night. So I decided that I want to get something. I want to buy one type of shirt. So, I just thought, instead of staying at the airport, let me go and look for the shirt. 
but I can't remember. I think I've seen it. I don't know what, what street it is on. So I came out of the airport and got on the train. And we went and went and went. I just thought, okay, we've got to, ah, this is, I think I've entered central London. I just, next stop, I just came out. As I came out and I came out from underground like this and I got on the street I came out on. Ah, I said, this name is familiar. And the next person I asked, I said, where is this shop where they sell this shirt? And he said, it is just three houses away from where you are. And I got in there. And I was telling people, do you know, do you know I was divinely led into your shop? <laughs> they were looking at me as if, what was that? Now, don't look at me like that. That should be normal Christianity. Can somebody say normal Christianity? That should be normal Christianity. Now, how do you get there? We'll look at some things in a while. But gen- when it comes to general things in your life, I, Lord, as I go to work, I want to always be in your will. I want to, you pray a prayer of commitment. Psalm 37 and Proverbs 16. Psalm 37, Proverbs 16. Psalm 37, verse 5. The word of God says, Commit your way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Something happened two days ago. I'll tell, and Pastor Yukon didn't know this, but I'll tell, I'll tell you this. Proverbs 16, 3. So, commit your way unto the Lord, and the Lord will bring things to pass. Amen. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Commit your works unto the Lord, and your thoughts shall be established. God, start, God will start affecting your thoughts. In the morning, what day was that? Was that yesterday? For yesterday? Yes, that was Monday. I went Sunday. I wasn't in church on Sunday. I was at Ibadan. We were having some, so I was at two of the branches in Ibadan preaching. So I, I, I came back. And then I remembered, and I was thinking in my mind, I want to... Pastor Della told me something that had to do with one of our branches and that she had discussed with Pastor Yukon. And then so Pastor Della traveled. And I just thought on that Monday morning that I think I want to discuss some of this thing with Pastor Oyekun. But I thought Monday is her first day. She's been away from work. I don't want to call her office. And, and, um, but when I thought of that, I just knew in my spirit that it was like I was still discussing it. I said, okay. You see, your spirit knows things your head does not know. And your head will just be wondering, how, how, how can this? So the whole day went, the whole day went. Then I just thought in my mind, I want to buy a microwave oven. So I got in the car and drove to Ikeja Mall. So I, when I got there, so it was a few minutes before that shop closed. So I entered and I was telling them, I want to buy, I looked at it, I said, while I was talking, the, the shop closed and I was still inside. So I told them, okay, okay, do you take card, POS? I said, ah, oh, unfortunately, all our POS terminals are down. I said, ah, but I've seen what I want to buy. Uh-uh. So just give me like 10 minutes and I'm going to go and get cash. So I came out of the shop I went to the ATM machine like two shops, two, two, whatever, away from that particular shop. And I was there waiting, waiting, waiting for my turn. And then in work pastor, you come, ah, okay. So I, I raised the topic. <laughs> so discuss about that thing about the church, this particular church branch. And we talked a little bit, talked a little bit, talked a little bit. And I was just thinking while I was talking to her, I said, in the morning, I knew I would talk to her sometime during the day, but I just felt I shouldn't disturb in the office. But I still felt like I so I just it's amazing. Spiritual things are very real. So when it was my turn to get my money, the thing was not working. 
So we moved. She too wanted to get some money. So went to another part where there was another ATM and she put her own card. Did you get money? And she got money. And I put my card. Your institution. What's that signal? Your what? Your financial institution is not available. I, I, But I just said, I tried. I just went back to the car. And I felt what I was supposed to do at Ikeja Mall has been done. Yeah, because by that time, the guys told me, we're going to give you maximum. I said, give me 10 minutes. He said, we'll give you seven minutes. By this time, it was like 20 minutes. So, so I had to buy the thing yesterday. Do you ever get led by the Holy Spirit? Do you have, do you have, it should be, this should be normal. This is one of the areas where we should be different from sinners. Not that your day starts every morning to evening, the way unbelievers have their whole life. That's also, there's nothing, you can't even sense anything supernatural. And that is how 365 days of every year is. Uh Uh-uh. Praise the Lord. The steps of the righteous are what? That is called divine direction. They are ordered of the Lord. They are ordered of the Lord. Praise God. So, commit. So, generally, commit your days unto the Lord. Commit your going on the Lord. And you'll find out that almost unconsciously, in normal, regular, day-to-day things, routine things, you'll find out that you look back and say, ah, God has even been leading me. I wasn't even conscious of it. Amen. But when it comes to major decisions, now this is the second part. When it comes to big steps, you cannot just be casual about divine direction. You, have a, you already have a job. Another job shows up. Pastor, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Why? Oh, the, the, the conditions are better. The money is better. Why? I said the money is better. The condition is better. I said why? Haven't you heard that the money may be better this month, next month, the company may collapse? Oh, I, when, I don't know when you were born. I've been living on earth for a while and I've seen things. Nobody saw it coming. Even the MD did not see it coming. But yet, the believer, God kept on telling the believer, there's a check. There's a check. Spend some time to seek me and hear me clearly. And then, the job where they hastily left, 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 left. The person that moved into their seat within two months, triple promotion. When it comes to big issues, who you're going to marry, where you are going to find believing, domicile, um, workplace, moving. I see people moving, moving without consulting the Lord. I don't want to go into the issue of American visa lottery or Canadian, what they call that thing, high high skill. I don't want to go into all those things right now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. we only do those kind of things at least give God the opportunity to have an impute because he has our best interest at heart if you, I mean, if you believe that he has our best interest let me see your hands up he has it he has it at that. wave your hand let me see your hands up are you sure you trust God like that amen The most important thing is that you want to be where he wants you to be. There is no prosperity in one geographical location. The prosperity, success, blessing of God that make it rich and I don't know sorrow is coming upon you at the center of the will of God. Not a geographical place, but the fact that you are where God expects you to be. Even if there are challenges economically where God wants you to be, you just find out that, hey, 
You are well. God takes care of you. Why did the ravens during famine? I don't think, you see, none of you don't know what famine is. And I pray none of us may we never know what famine is. Because we will be dying and dying and vultures will be picking people before. The, I don't know if you, have, did you ever see this picture on the internet some time back? I don't know if it's still on the internet where um, there was a famine. I don't know whether it was Somalia or whatever. And there was this baby that was dying on, this, on the road and there was already a vulture nearby. The child was not fully dead, but the vulture, how many of you remember that? How many of you have seen that picture? In fact, the situation was so depressing that a few weeks after, that reporter that took that picture died. He died of the depression he experienced in that famine that he went to cover. Killed him. That was the kind of situation Elijah was in. But God gave him a direction and said, go to such and such a place. Camp there by the brook Kerith. And then I've commanded the ravens. Now, of all kind of birds, ravens. Ravens are carnivorous birds. Their specialty is meat. And they are selfish. They don't share. But God took the brain of that raven and unscrewed it the other way. The same, you know, they said the Onyibu that made pencil Hello, talk to me now. Talk to me now. Sorry if you are watching by television. What that simply means is the person that made the pencil also knows how to make what can erase it. The same God that put his brain, wired his brain like that, just unwired it a bit. Just for the sake of this, the person, the servant of God that was in the will of God. And that was how I survived it. So always, don't put yourself in that stress. Go where God wants you to go. Stay where God wants you to stay. Move if you move. If he hasn't told you to move, don't be itchy and be saying, I'm forcing the hand of God. No, no, don't do that. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying now? All right, so let's balance it. I'm not saying don't travel abroad or anything like that. I'm just saying that follow the spirit of God and you will enjoy your life. Amen. Praise God. Are we together? In major decisions and big decisions, oh my goodness, I've got to move quickly. I've got a lot of things to share. Um, and you want to take big steps in your life, learn to pray what I call inquiring prayers. Inquiring prayers. Inquire in, with, in, with God in prayer. First Chronicles chapter 14. Let's look at an example with David. You know, many of us are very presumptuous. We just assume so many things. And the Lord began to speak to me and said, don't assume, don't assume. Don't assume. Seek me. And please, careful. I want to read this scripture, then I'll tell you a few things. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 14. David, warrior, king, and he had now been made the king proper, proper. Verse 8. First Chronicles 14, 8. And when the Philistines, the enemy of God, heard that David was anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek David. In other words, they went to hunt for him, to attack him. And David heard of it, went out against them, and the Philistines came. And spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Are you here? Are we together? Verse 10. And what did David do next? David began to fight. Was that what he did next? No. And David inquired of God. That word inquire means to ask questions about certain things. It means to seek the opinion about the matter. It means to ask for the cons consent, to, of, to ask for counsel. It means to consult. This was a major battle. Lives were going to be lost. 
territories was going to be lost or gained. And then he said, you know what? We need, before we fire the first arrow, we need to ask God about the matter. Look, are you a child of God at all? Do you ask God about matters? That is how to be a Christian. You ask God about the matter. Not that I've made all my plans. I have decided, I know how my life must go with the next 20 years, 50 years, 40 years. One person told me, I'm in charge. This is a born again, talk talking person. I'm in charge of my life, I'm in control. I know how I want my life to go and how my life should go and I have decided that's how it will go. I said, hmm. <laughs> how can you be too sure? Ah, no, I'm very sure. And I said, the way you are behaving is as if you are going to do whatever you want to do and God had better fall in line. <laughs> if you are like that, God will just fold his hands and watch. And that's one of the reasons why Christians struggle and struggle and struggle. And then people are praying. And then, because God wants to help, but he's not allowed to help. All right. So let's keep on reading now. So remember that. And then, verse 10. David inquired of God saying, shall I go up against the Philistines? The answer could be yes, could be no. Even though I'm already ready. If God tells me, go back home. I'm going back home. Even though the logical thing is that once we are ready like this, we are poised for battle, we should just go. But he said, ah. We factor God in. And we want to know his plan for our lives. And then, will you deliver them into my hand? See, inquiring prayers means you are reverently and politely asking God questions. One time God spoke to me and said, if you understand, no, don't, don't look around, please. Look at me and listen. Please listen to this. God spoke to me some years back and said, if you understand the meaning of a perfect gentleman, you will understand my behavior. I am a, I'm like a perfect gentleman. Most things in your life as my child, I will not do anything except you ask me. And many a times I watch my children struggle and I don't do anything until they ask me why what's going on then I talk <laughs> a perfect gentleman will not come to your house except you know in advance or you invite the person and tell the person to come amen a gentleman father-in-law is not always asking what are you eating again tonight Eh? How many fish do you have in your pot? Is your, is your, is your husband taking good care of you? you a, no, no, no. Father in law is a gentleman. You live in the same city. Two years.
of God to conceal a matter. And it is the glory of kings or his children to seek it out, to search it out. Amen. There are many things, many solutions that God will not talk to you about until you say, Lord, talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. Amen. So keep that in mind. Are you with me? Are you still here? All right. Now, when it comes to divine direction, do not give fleeces. The a question came up last Wednesday, and I talked a little bit about fleeces, and I'm going to say some things along those lines again. But go to Judges chapter six. In the Old Testament, there are certain things that were allowed because they were Old Testament people and they were not recreated spiritually. They were not born again. Their spirit man was dead just like their mind was dead and their flesh dead. But in the New Testament, once we have given our lives to Christ and we are part of the body of Christ, our flesh may be dead in trifling and sins and our mind subject to the death in this world but our spirits are recreated and alive. Ezekiel 36, 26, God said that I'm going to remove your heart of stone. Heart of stone means dead. It's stone. You knock the stone. It's nothing. It's lifeless. And I'm going to put you into a new heart. A heart of, I'm taking the heart of stone and put into you a heart of flesh. Flesh means that it's sensitive. It can respond to me now. There's a difference. So, under that old covenant, look at what God happened to a man called Gideon in, Je in Judges chapter 6. And I want to read this because this is where people say, you know, I am just putting out a fleece, a test, to see whether this is what I should do, whether God wants me to do it. So, if, if God wants me to really, 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 really pick my tight, in the next five minutes, let's, let three people come through that door. <laughs> you stingy thing, you. God has already told you he wants you to pay your tight. <laughs> Jesus already said it, that that tight thing you ought to do, and not leave all the other living your life right undone. Jesus has spoken. QED. Amen. If God really wants me to be born again, let three thunders strike and strike the Iroko tree in front of my house at the same point. <laughs> so, I'm going to, did you remember the Amala story I gave last? Should I give it again? I'm going to give it again because some of you need to hear that Amala story to help you out with all these fleeces. That's not the way God wants to lead you. Judges chapter 6. Let's look at Gideon. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, verse 1. And the Lord delivered them unto the hand of the Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel and against the Midianites. And when the, verse 3, I will skip a few verses. And when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of Israel, even they came up against them and they camped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till the, you come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep, nor ox, nor ass. Verse 6, and Israel was, as a result of this, greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Verse 7, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel. And he told them about their sins and all of that. And then, verse 11, and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash the Abizirite, and his son Gideon, Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. He was doing it in secret. Was that a bold man? Hello? He was hiding. Was that a bold man? All right. Was that, an, was that a fearful man? All right. That's right. Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from Midianites. Verse 11. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Eh? In hiding. But you see, God calls those things which be not as though they were. God saw him beyond hiding. And ultimately, he ended up becoming what God called him. Amen. 
they really did great exploits. But before that, let's see some things that happen. And Gideon said unto him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? Listen, you can call an in Old Testament people can call an angel by Lord. And the angel will not do anything because these were dead people. And they were not children of the Father. But you try and call an angel, my Lord. Nah. The angel will reject it straight away. That's why the angel that appeared to John, when John wanted to worship, said, no, 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 don't worship me. Worship only Jesus. Amen. So, so, so he, this was, this was servants. Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Gideon, David, Solomon. They were not sons and daughters. They were servants. Nobody could be a son and a daughter until Jesus Christ came, died, presented his blood, resurrected, and the new covenant came into place. So, let's see this react thing that was going on here. Oh my Lord, if, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? And where are all the miracles which our fathers told us? Say, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us and abandoned us and delivered us in the hands of Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said, oh my Lord, so, you see, God said, you are a mighty man of valor. He wasn't believing. He was complaining and asking questions. Then, God gave him another word. Go in this thy might. <laughs> and he was wondering. So, he was really not believing here. And said, Oh my Lord, where which shall I save Israel? How will I save this Israel? This is unbelief speaking and doubt. Behold, my family is poor. Who is talking about your family? Is it your whole family we are carrying there? It is you that God has called. But he was just, his brain was just saying, no, no, I can't. I'm, I, can't I can't believe this. He's poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house, so I'm the poorest of the least. And the Lord said unto him, surely I'll be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man. And he said, if now, you see, God is speaking like twice, thrice. Yet, he was this way, if I now have found grace in your sight, then show me a sign. Remember Jesus Christ said, an evil and perverse generation are always looking for signs. Now, that does not mean signs like healings, God touching, and no, no. It means we want to see three people come through that door before we do what has already been told us to do in the scriptures. That's evil and perverse. That's why the Bible says that the children of Israel, they had an evil heart of unbelief. evil heart won't believe. Whatever God has said in the scriptures especially, the scriptural instructions have not been given to us to pray about and be asking God again, God do you really mean it? No. The scriptural instructions have been given to us to obey. Finish. Don't be praying and seeking God. Should I pay my time? Should I evangelize? Should I have a personal prayer devotion? Should I? No, 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 no. No, no. God will start wondering, what, what's wrong? What, what, what part of the instruction don't you understand? Or oh, is that something there? So, this guy, the God was speaking to him and he was still saying, no, no, no. Okay, God, you will really show me a sign now. The highest kind of faith is the faith that just takes God at his word. Simple. Jesus Christ came after he had after he had been glorified and he had asked, uh, resurrected, he came into the house and said, peace be unto you. And, and Thomas was not there. That's why I don't miss church when people are gathering in church. Thomas was not there. Who knows where he went? So, when he came back, we've seen the Lord! We've seen the Lord. Thomas said, me, a whole literate in, intellectual like me, learned fellow like me, if I do not touch his hand, and, and see the whole and put my and trust it. Our sin is what? Believe it. What do you mean? And the Lord was listening. Of course, invincible. A few days later, Jesus came again. But thank God, this time around, he was there with the brethren. And the first thing Jesus did was to address Thomas. Touch my hand. Put your hand in my side. Are you okay now? He said, because you have felt me, that's why you believe. I'm sure Jesus just shook his head and said, but 
Blessed are those who they did not touch or feel, but yet believe. Just simply by hearing the word, not just looking for signs. That's, in other words, Jesus was looking at. So, in other words, what he was saying is that you are not, you are not blessed. You're not blessed. How many of you want to be blessed of the Lord? Oh, just the word, what he has said. But what God has said was not enough for Gideon. Gideon said, No, 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 no. Give me another sign. Huh. But God obliged him because really he was dead in his spirit. And God did not rebuke him. But you cannot do that because you are on a higher level and you are on a better covenant. You are on a better, you are on a superior covenant based upon superior promises than Gideon. And so Gideon, so you, help, you know the story. What did Gideon do? And he went and what did he do now? Let's, I, I want to just uh, quickly skip all over this. So he took a flesh, he took something, and then the angel performed wonders and put um, fire and psh, the thing consumed the fire of the sacrifice. And then uh, the angel departed out of his sight and all of that. And he said, oh, I've seen, and Gideon built an altar unto the Lord. And that, what did Gideon do the same night? Um, well, further down. Amen. And um, verse 36, Gideon said unto God, if you will save Israel by my hand as you have said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool. Hasn't God spoken? He even said as you have said, but if you have said it, oh, but I don't believe. Give me another sign. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and, it's, and the dry, and the earth around it is dry, then I will know. Because early in the morning, when you put the wool, fleece means wool, and then the dew, the dew falls on everything. He said, but I want only on the wool. And the following morning, hello, let's read on. Verse 38, and it was so, for he rose up early in the morning and thrust the fleece together and wring the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water, a lot of water came from the fleece something but the whole place was dry and then Gideon said unto God God don't be angry with me oh. don't be annoyed let not your anger be out against me and I will speak but this once again let me prove I pray thee but this once with the fleece now this time around let it be the reverse Lord let it now be dry only upon the fleece but let all <laughs> the ground let that be due and God did so that night for it was dry upon the fleece only and there was dew on all the ground. This one, many Christians have taken it and said, Aha! This is how I know the will of God. One day, one sister. This happened when I was in the north. She said, I've been seeking God for a life partner. Seeking God. This is too much, God. God, this is too much. This is too much. If, okay, she said, I have an idea. Today, I will not leave the house. You must send my husband to me in this, my room in the house. I will cook this big bowl of amala. And the first brother that comes to the house, I know he is the one you have sent. So she cooked and she really did a fantastic job cooked nice amala with nice the four and the and the and all the obstacles and everything there she finished it cooking it and put it on the table in her room i said lord i'm waiting for you send my husband show me who my husband is by sending the person that will come in and Boom, go, boom, boom, boom. She got a knock. Hey! The Lord has answered my prayer. He shall be my God. The Lord that answered by fire. He shall be my. And she opened the door. It was this 60 something year old evangelist who is already a grandfather. 
This evangelist was the one telling us himself what happened. He said, because they were trying to follow up, they haven't been seeing this lady for a while. So he said, let me even go and follow up. He opened the door like this. The aroma of fresh food hit him. And when his eyes and the lady's eye did like fall like this, she just collapsed as I cried. Yeah, yeah, no, Lord, no. Ah. Man of God was wondering, Lord, what is no? Cried and cried. Stop crying. He said, no, 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 Lord. What happened? Then she narrated the story. The man of God said, Do I look like the answer to your fleece? <laughs> I said, No, 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 you don't. Stop. That was permitted in the Old Testament. Stop doing those kind of things. Some people will say, Lord, if you don't want me to go, let my car knock. Some people pray, some Christians pray some weird prayers. Lord, if you know, if you know I will not be faithful to you, let me be sick. And then they fall sick. I say, yes, the Lord did. No, no, no. You, 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 you pray the prayer that the scripture does not give you basis for in the New Testament. And Satan heard you because you are in disobedience and stepped in and accommodated you. One guy said, when he got born again at the age of 12, he made, he told the Lord, Lord, if I ever backslide, break my arm at the age of 24. He was backsliding, going for a party, the cast some assaulted, and his hand was in the cast for about a year or two. Then, in the process, he got restored, and one day he was not just sharing a testimony. I, 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 I am now a sound Christian today because the Lord broke my arm. The pastor said, hey, 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 be, be, be. What are you smoking? What are you smoking? The Lord had nothing to do with you breaking your hand. The devil broke your hand because of your foolishness. You backslided and you played yourself into the hand of the devil and you open your big mouth to pray a prayer that God has no hand in. And you open yourself to them. Be careful. Be careful. Call this weird prayer Christianity. Be careful. Have you seen Jesus pray like that? Have you seen the people in the New Testament pray like that? Say, no, no, no. This one is African prayers. Stop that nonsense. Henceforth, no, we know man after the flesh. We just know ourselves by the spirit and the word. Finish. Can I have a good amen? amen. If my husband will be unfaithful to me, let him lose that job. Don't pray all those kind of things. Let his job not prosper. If, if when he prospers, he will, he will think of another woman. A better way to pray is together, Lord, cause us to keep on growing in you. That the prosperity you bring will not destroy us. We will mature. We will grow. We will pray like that. Not just if break his head. If <laughs> Amen. I can't hear you. Amen. Amen. All this destructive prayers. God has no hand in it. All right. So, don't put out fleeces like that. Amen. One or two more things. One way God may be leading you is by the desires of your heart. Psalm 37. And then I close. Let me see if I can do this in another four or five minutes. Psalm 37. From your spirit. One way God leads you is Psalm 37 verse 4. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And what will happen? And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Verse 4. 37 4. Psalms. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. That verse is a double-edged sword 
there are two meanings to it and they are two different meanings and both scriptural most of us only know one meaning to it that means if i delight myself in the lord now delight yourself in the lord means that you're born again get born again get spirit filled worship the lord serve in the lord's house pay your tithe all things god says you should do do it with excitement if, and that's good Start, be a god chaser pursue god put him first in your life and when as you do that amen then the things you desire the lord will start producing it he will start blessing you and it's true but that is one interpretation another interpretation many of us don't understand is this that as you begin to delight yourself don't miss this one as you begin to delight yourself in the lord by serving him by seeking him by praying by worshiping by doing the things he wants you to do and spending time with the lord he will begin to give you the desires you will find out that your desires will start changing and you will start finding out that now the desires you have in your heart are the desires that god is giving you amen That as you delight yourself in the Lord, and as you are staying close to the Lord, you will start finding out that the desires that God has for you, He will start putting it in your heart. So, if you are serving the Lord and close to the Lord, you can now begin to check into your, your heart is not your mind. Your heart is not your flesh. Your heart is your word spirit you can now begin to look inside of your spirit what are the things that are exciting to your spirit that is one major way god's leading will come to your life amen that's one main way i knew i was called to minister the gospel praise god go born again spirit feel then i started getting involved with people that preach and teach the word then i got magazines and you know, thinking can i copeland for a price all these things then i got their videos and after a while i just like the way these people are ministering ah i desire to start preaching like that oh i desire. i did not know that was the first it started having and then the leader started giving me one or two things to do and then of course later on I had an encounter with the Lord that told us to confirm it. But the first thing was the desires. Praise God. Some of you just have a, I have a desire just to see. I can't just, I just want people to get saved, to get saved, to get saved. It's a desire. That's the Lord speaking to you. Amen. I just have a desire to, there are various kind of things God puts in your, start building up, rising up in your spirit because you are now close to him. And that is one way God speaks desires. I remember one time in the Badon when the church was still very small in the Badon, where this lady she just has a desire to always decorate, decorate, decorate the church, decorate the stage, decorate everything. So I said the Lord just told her one day and said, Have you not understood that you have there's a leading of the Lord in your life to find a business in this area she said, eh? because what she read in school is something strange different I was like, yeah yeah do it so she sat down and said this is how, what you should do this is how you should start this small thing. and today oh her business is doing very well another lady she likes all this protocol thing when we have protocol in church serve do this do that yeah when we have programs they'll be the ones to quickly put together and cook something nice for us the pastors guest ministers and when the pastor just called and said come 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 why do you do, why are you so excited I, said, I just have there's an excitement i mean my what did you study she mentioned one strange course she studied so as i said start a business on these things huh? so you start a business business is into plenty of millions of naira now cooks for governors cooks for (laughs) 
So, as you stay close to the Lord, what kind of desires are rising out of your spirit? That's one way God leads. Amen. Amen. Close with this. If you really want to really, really be very strong in divine guidance, four things. Number one, you, four things. No, well, let me just say this. If you really, really want to be sharp in divine guidance, you need to train your spirit. You need to train your spirit to be able to pick and develop spiritual sensitivity. How do you do it? Four ways. Number one, feed on the word. Daily, spend time in the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Think upon it. Meditate upon it. Feed on the word. Number two, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Praying in tongues sharpens your spiritual sensitivity. That's why Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. No wonder God could use him to write books more than even the other apostles. He wrote over half of the New Testament by divine revelation because he's speaking in tongues a lot. He got a lot of revelation. All right. That's number two. Number three, instantly obey your spirit promptings. Sometimes your spirit will prompt you and give you some information. And you say, where, where is that coming from? Instantly obey it. Instantly obey it. That's number three. And then number four, walk in love. Hmm. When you are walking in strife, you are jamming the frequency that has been transmitted. Every time, you know, because some, there's some, some of us will just say, I like, no, 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 I ah, know. I will just, I will just, I just, I just want to hold some malice for three days only. Those are three days of no transmission. You just bring out your phone. Let me even no signal. Hmm? Husband and wives. And then your wife just comes in after you. you, 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 you we're not talking, we're talking. And then she comes. You see, look, after you've been married for a while, you will find out that an apology. Should I say this? Should I say this? Should I say it or should I not? It's not all the time that an apology is verbalized. You must accept it. You are not happy with her. You slept and then you woke up in the morning. And then she comes to meet you in the morning, in the morning and just hugs you. Don't just say, leave me a job. Don't do that. God will hold it against you. Because it took a lot. Come and hug ugly you. Sorry. <laughs> Did I say that? He comes and he just puts his hand on your chest. Say, you are looking nice, my darling. Say, Who is your darling? Sister, God will hold that against you. Because that's his own way of trying to humble himself and say, I'm sorry now. Why must you just rub it in? Is it up to seven days? I've not talked to you yet. Don't come and meet me. And then he comes home and he brings pizza. That's it. That is a peace offering. Rise up to your feet, please. Come on. Know it for what it is. You know the Bible talk is scriptural. A peace offering is scriptural. Don't say, eh, you're not trying to bribe me, eh? God will look at you and say, now that person is more righteous than you. Amen. When you walk in love, divine direction comes. It's crisp and clear. Quickly forgive people. Give them the benefit of doubt. Don't hold grudges. You know what's called black book? Let me see. You know what's called black book? What's, what's black book? What's, the, what's called black book? Eh? Is what? A list of offenders. Hey. Tell the truth and let everybody be ashamed. You have a black book at home. Okay. 
Some of us don't have it anymore. We've outgrown that physical one. But the book is here. <laughs> it's very black and it's inside here. That's how you did to me. That's how you did it to me. This is the 17th time you are doing it. Ah! Yes, 17. I'm counting it. The first one, you did it in 1981. The 16th of February. 1981. The 16th of February was a Thursday. Oh. At 5.33. You were wearing a gray shirt. <laughs> a jaw, please. <laughs> Why? Because when you need to hear God, you will not be able to. You will not be able to. Amen. Lift up your hand and just tell the Lord, help me to fulfill the conditions to hear you clearly. Thank you, Father. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that I can flow in your will, in your plan and your purpose for my life. There are people here, your career advancement, your family being at peace, your spiritual life moving forward is, is, is dependent on these things about hearing from God. But you've got to just put yourself in a position where God can get to you and speak to you. Thank you, Father, for helping us. The word of God will be tonight. Lord, let this word be usable in our lives in Jesus' name. Talk to the Lord. Rebaka to zumbre yeda boshitaya. Reko to zumbre yada baba baba. Resete ya baba baba. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you need more information on Reverend Yinka's messages, log on to www.gfconline.org or call the following numbers 01 Double seven, double four, 